studio by Brad Rogers, COO of Woodlawn Hospital. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. Good, good. We've also got uh, Jason C. joining us as we uh, talk about some changes that you guys are doing there in your department, Jason. Good morning. Yep. Looking forward to sharing that. So, uh, you guys had your board meeting yesterday. Correct. Did our board meeting yesterday and, um, you know, it was a busy day. Lots of uh, new and exciting things going there on at the hospital. So, um, we'll quickly go through our financials. Uh, December was a good month in hospital terms, which sometimes mean that <laughs> there's a lot of people that aren't feeling well. And, and the good thing is we were able to take care of them. And so for the month, we had about a $24,000 uh, profit from operations. And that's really important because the last couple of years, operations have been really, really hurt on the outpatient side and, and in a lot of our ancillary services because of COVID. Um, so that's a really positive thing. Um, for the year, uh, we have a net income of about $4.2 million in the positive. Now, the caveat of that is we have to remember that over $4 million was federal assistance through the COVID-19 dollars. Mm -hmm. So as we look towards you know the rest of 2022, our goal is to do what we can do to have a profitable year um, without the thought process of including any of the federal dollars. So what can we do now to adjust to the, the new baseline normal right. with, with COVID um, from an operations standpoint? So a lot of what we're talking about at the board meetings and a lot of what we'll be talking about with departments over the next several months is, is that what can we do to improve our capacity to see more patients um, and at the same time kind of have that lean strategy of what we can do to, to curb costs okay. as best as possible. And I know uh, one big question before we go any further that's uh, on everybody's mind, and we were kind of talking about it briefly off the air, is uh, a lot of the things get lost in the shuffle. So what are we looking at at the uh, most recent COVID variant right now? With regard to, you know, the trajectory, yes, um, the Omicron variant, uh, we're, we're being told by the CDC and the federal government that, you know, we probably have a week to two weeks before it completely peaks nationally. Okay. Um, we have seen some uh, recent trends downward in the daily rates. Um, I'm always a little bit cautious about that because sometimes there's a delay in the reporting. Mm -hmm. And so um, looking at that, you know, maybe on Monday of next week would probably be a better indication of how that really went throughout this entire week. Okay. Um, but preliminary reports show that it may be declining in Indiana as of right now. Good. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah. So uh, apart from financials, uh, what else did you guys talk about at the uh, meeting? Well, a couple exciting things at the hospital. Um, one, we completed our application for our chest pain accreditation, okay. um, which has taken 12 months to get through that process. Uh, Don Gabrich, who is in charge of our accreditations and our um, compliance with our HFAP and our uh, uh, national accreditations, is uh, doing a great job on that. Um, she finished that application and sent it out this last week. We'll see an audit coming coming from that national accrediting body here in the next month um, or so, and so we're looking forward to that. That's a lot of work that um, she's done over the year with the uh, cardiology physicians, with the emergency staff, uh, with the ER physicians, with our laboratory, with our imaging departments to improve the quality and speed of care at Woodlawn Hospital okay. um, for anybody with chest pain. So that's really exciting. Um, on a, uh, you know, not so exciting note, but a, you know, happy note, I guess, for Dr. Rombach. Um, Dr. Rombach has served Woodlawn and Fulton County for 25 years, and he is just a, uh, you know, a bedstone of Woodlawn Hospital over that time frame. Oh, absolutely. She has resigned. Um, we'll be moving to the Northern California area. She has a son out that direction, and um, will be leaving Woodlawn on April 1st. Okay. Um, patients will be getting a letter in the mail from her shortly uh, with some information about that and their uh, options to transfer care over to our other orthopedic providers. Um, can't say enough about what Dr. Rombach has done for Woodlawn Hospital in the community. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate her years of service and wish her all the best in the future. Absolutely. 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 And then on kind of the exact opposite note, we added our first nurse practitioner in pediatrics. Oh. Um, we hired on and brought on this past week Janelle Mulligan. Janelle is a longtime uh, nurse at Woodlawn Hospital who has worked in multiple departments um, through the ICU, med surge, house supervision. And um, she started this week as our first 
a nurse practitioner in our pediatrics department. Welcome and that you. was that was really due to a demand that we have been challenged to, to, to meet over the last year or so. Um, getting 10 to 15 phone calls a day of families who would like to get their children in that day and we just haven't been able to fill that. Right. Um, our two pediatricians, Dr. Rayburn and Dr. Feldman, are phenomenal at what they do and, and so full that uh, we needed to give them some support. So really excited about that. Yeah, well congratulations to her and uh, looking forward to seeing the pediatricians department grow even more. Yeah, it's really exciting to have that capacity now for those families. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing we talked about this week at, at some of our other meetings is really a public um, service notification about our blood supply, not only mm -hmm. in the state of Indiana, but nationally. Uh, we are struggling across the state and across the nation with having enough blood products. Uh, Red Cross has gotten to the point now where hospitals are being put on allocation of how many um, uh, units of blood we get and, and not only how many, but what type. Wow. Um, it's based on history of use um, and it's going to be a very limiting thing. So I really urge citizens to, to get on the uh, redcross.org website to look into upcoming donation and drives um, so that we can boost that across the state of Indiana. Um, there is a uh, blood drive on February 8th here at St. Joseph's Parish. Uh, is between the hours of 11 and 5 p.m. Uh, you can get on redcross.org and sign up for that one. There's also one on February 9th at uh, Rochester High School. Um, that's open to the public and is between the hours of 8 and 1.30 p.m. So okay. get online, look at those options, register if you can. Uh, the, the community here and the communities across the state really would appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. And then really, you talked about earlier our guest here, Jason C., our chaplain. Our chaplain's here today to talk about patient experience at Woodlawn Hospital. Thank you. Yeah, um, so I have been a chaplain for 14 years, and, uh, and with that have been given some added responsibilities. You know, small hospital, you kind of wear a couple different hats. And right. So I've got the opportunity to kind of look into what, uh, what we want to do is be patient-centered. And uh, what that looks like is uh, delivering high quality and safe care to every patient every time. And uh, one of the things that we have the opportunity of doing through our accreditation is a community health needs assessment. And that comes around about every three years. And uh, so we're up, we're up on that date this year. So we're working on this health needs assessment. And what that uh, does is it provides us um, with an opportunity to see where the needs are in our community. And uh, we work with uh, community stakeholders and we have some uh, uh, IRHA, Indiana Rural, Health Association uh, helps us compile all this data and information uh, along with our community stakeholders to uh, again just figure out where those greater needs are at. So we talk about an efficiency side of how the hospital runs but we want to be productive in meeting the needs of what the community has so that we can improve the overall health of the community. Uh, and for example in uh, 2019 uh, the identified needs for the community were mental health, illegal and prescription drug use and poverty and uh, with with that information over the last several years uh, there have been uh, different community uh, organizations put together some churches put together celebrate recovery we have a recovery cafe yeah. uh, the outlet youth centers going you know for a safe place for kiddos and uh, if you're have you if you've read the front page of the paper Fulton County Hope is on the front page of the paper talking about some of their restructuring and one of the things that they did is uh, looked at homelessness and the poverty issue with that and so they've created a program to to help people get get into some adequate housing and, and even some jobs so you know the previous uh, community needs assessment I think was very valuable uh, to, to that and then looking back over the last 18 to 24 months and seeing kind of where some of those gaps are at with uh, you hate to say COVID again but uh, you know, it revealed some needs. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like uh, this year so that we can put a strategy to that and again, just kind of grow our overall health in the community. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I think it's important too to note that, you know, Jason being at Woodlawn Hospital for 14 years has been a huge asset to our hospital and, and not just our patients, but our staff. You know, the, the amount of stress that, that the whole world has faced over the last couple of years with COVID um, has been challenging to say the least. Um, in the hospital setting, you know, our staff members uh, regularly utilize uh, Jason to, to help them as well. 
So we really appreciate that over the years and look forward to this community needs assessment and some new ideas for what we can do in the community um, to partner with other agencies yeah. to serve the community's needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. So lots of good things uh, going on at the hospital. And uh, of course, Jason, um, if anybody is in there, not just necessarily a patient, but a family member, they can reach out to you while they're at the hospital. Correct? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd encourage that. I'm glad to glad to be a support and uh, uh, always good to just connect with people. So. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for taking time out of your very busy days as you guys are both very important at Woodlawn Hospital to come sit down and talk uh, with us a little bit here on the radio. We appreciate it every month. Glad to get the message out. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again next month. Sounds good. We'll see you then, Paul. Thank you. A message from the...